So I think it's very important this afternoon that I articulated that rider and what sits behind it in terms of um, a, a growing consciousness within the ACMA of the need to ex ante have a much better feel for what um, some of those uh, market participants' behaviour or market structures might bring. And I think that that's a very critical lesson for the ACMA over the last several years and it's one I think you'll see far more of from the ACMA in what I'm, what I'm suggesting sits behind that better ex ante analysis. Um, I want to turn to the telecommunications consumer, consumer codes. A continuing concern of the government, consumer groups quite obviously, and regulatory agencies involved including us, is the level of consumer complaints to the TIO. On the release of the TIA annual report, our Minister said last week, if we don't see a significant improvement in these sorts of reports and the trends start heading down, we will legislate. We will sit down with the Ombudsman and work out what we need to do to crack down on the companies who continue to mistreat their consumers. And I note that, the, uh, that ACAN has uh, called for the introduction of a consumer compensation payment. We at the ACMA have said that we will be considering all of our options including additional investigations of the systemic issues into individual companies, the structure of the incentives for both consumer service and compliance with codes and possible changes to the current regulatory arrangements. It's obviously a hot issue. More importantly, it's a real and important issue. We've been addressing telecommunications industry code compliance through a program of audits, education and formal action against providers, in particular over the last 18 months. Since the 1st of July last year, the ACMA has audited 250 companies for code compliance and conducted 24 investigations into the code compliance of individual providers and three investigations into compliance with the TIO scheme. We've un recently undertaken wide industry audits testing that industry participants have processes in place for complaint handling policies, financial hardship policy, direct debit policies and equipment suppliers disability requirements. This work has resulted in the issuing of a number of directions to comply and perhaps more importantly we hope has resulted in a good deal of change behaviour of industry participants and we think in at least 40 cases. While the process audits were very valuable in changing the behaviour of smaller industry participants, the ACMA considers that there needs to be more done to improve compliance in practice as opposed to on paper among the larger providers where we are now focusing more on larger companies. Overall, there's been a significant increase in our investigative work over the last two years. Many of the investigations undertaken were suggested to the ACMA by members of our CCF, including ACAN's predecessor, CTN. The ACMA genuinely welcomes further suggestions about the subject matters of its telecommunications compliance activities, and we are very receptive to working with stakeholders to address, address issues of concern. As noted in the questions posed by ACAN, Yes, there are barriers to being able to act on all concerns, but we are open to receiving information and guidance that will point us in the right direction, particularly where there is sustained and persistent systemic um, consumer detriment. While we're not expecting consumer advocates to provide us with legally binding evidence, we, need to, we do need to have some basis on to which to commence an action. So while we rely on the antennae of consumers to alert us to problems that are occurring, we need to investigate each issue and determine whether or not a contravention has occurred. We are, at law, unable to simply rely on the findings of another agency as a basis for our regulatory action. Now where the ACMA has been given um, responsive tools, like infringement notices and direct legislation, like the SPAM Act, we have used them to very good effect. As you may be aware, and as I touched on uh, at the outset of our remarks, in a federal court, 
uh, the Federal Court imposed a total of 15.75 million in penalties for contravention of the SPAM Act following our first court action taken against providers of unsolicited SMS messages. And Alan, I noted, they can call it a significant victory for consumer, uh, communications consumers. And obviously we thought so too. What it demonstrates about the ACMA a, a, is that we are given sharp, when we're given sharp edge tools, we are more than willing to use them in the active and vigorous pursuit of industry compliance. We therefore welcome the Competition and Consumer Safeguard Bill and the provisions within that bill which promise to bolster our ability to regulate telecommunications more actively. Provisions in the bill would convert many of our monitoring responsibilities for important consumer safeguards such as the CSG into harder compliance mechanisms. The bill proposes that the ACMA be given the power to issue infringement notices for many provisions in the TIL Act. So we look forward to Parliament's consideration of these powers for the ACMA. Let me finally finish these introductory remarks about a partnership approach. This audience will be well aware that there are a number of agencies with responsibility for telecommunications consumer protection matters, as demonstrated by my colleagues from the ACCC and ASIC today. We work in partnership, and we do that very effectively with the ACCC, uh, less so than with ASIC, so it, um, I'm actually delighted to have the opportunity to meet Dee this afternoon. Uh, as with the ACCC, the TIO, and state and territory fair trading offices to achieve results. We also want to work in partnership with ACAN, particularly in the area of research and evidence gathering. ACAN's members have very valuable, relevant insights and data that are important and useful to our role. We consider that as regulators and stakeholders working together, Along with government, we can best ensure that the right regulatory tool is being applied to consumer problems at the right time. So it goes to matters of respect, trust, I think pragmatism, and as Delius noted, I think far more effective communications. And if we get the opportunity, Alan, in a Q&A session, I might, like, I might uh, be able to tease out some of those things that I'm alluding to. So thank you. <laughs>